Hey y'all, it's Cherokee Starfish, and welcome back to another episode of Betrayal in Antara. I'm glad that you're here, because we have a lot of ground that I'm going to cover today. Oh, I had a bit of a scratchy throat. Not really a sore one, but just kind of a, like on its way to a sore throat. But it's feeling much better now, and I'm glad. I've been doing this for a while, and of course... I figure, you know, when you talk a lot to engage an audience, it's going to happen. But, uh, I've been surprised that it, it hadn't happened before now. It hasn't happened sooner. I'm certainly not upset. But it's like, it, you know, it was inevitable. It was gonna happen. How is his armor? He didn't get hit, I don't think, did he? No, okay, we're good. I need to find a temple of core and get that stuff blessed. Oh, I almost forgot. There we go. So yeah, we are on the road south, back towards uh, like Malay and Ravenna and Ormede, and we have discovered that um, we're not blocked off from here. I thought that a lot of T-Core would probably be off limits to us now that we are in Chapter 4. Um, I figured that the game would want to push us to the north and have us go kind of above the belt, as it were. Uh, but I have been pleasantly surprised. You can go right through that intersection and on down the road, as far as I'm aware. Nothing has stopped us so far. Of course, we're not very far along, so it's possible we may run into some guards or something. Definitely running into uh, other random encounters. Oof. Well, let's see here. Shepherds in their red cloaks. They're not hitting us very hard, which is good. That is important. because there are a lot of them, so. I need to be remembering to drink sun water. Let's see, let's do five for him. I wish there was like a greater sun water or something, and maybe there will be like later in the game, who knows. Right now I'm just trying to be thankful that they're hitting us for like 10 and 11 points and not 20 something. can't get to him. I'm probably going to have to let that guy run. Let's see. There we go. I hate to do a whole stack like that, but... A lot of these guys are not going to be carrying cash is the main thing that I hate. So, like, if they get away, then all of the loot is going with them. Which is just unfortunate. I don't like unfortunate things. Let's see, we don't have a clear line of sight. Uh, still line of sight. Uh, I wonder... Okay, we can't hit him with that either. Oh well. He's just gonna have to get away then. Come on, William. Oh, wow, he got like two turns in a row. There we go. My boy. There we go. Sunwater's not super expensive, but like we've got limited inventory space, and when you're getting beaten up all the time, you go through it very quickly. I'm trying to use it more though because like the difficulty has spiked because the enemies have better equipment, they're a little bit stronger, you know, they've got higher skills to match our higher skills, but likewise, um, you know, we, it's, I, I have complained about it, and it, it's hard not to, because it's just a very sudden shift in the dynamic of the game, um, you know, like you can see that this is 
a big change from what we were doing before. I'm going to use one of these. We haven't used one yet. Um, but also, like, we haven't been using things like Send Water. We haven't used our defensive items. And so I can only complain so much because the game has provided these things and we have done fairly well without them to the point that I was pleased about that. So now that I have hoarded quite a few of them and I'm having to use them, um, you know, that's just got to become part of the strategy. I just have to deal with it. William threw the disc to the ground and quickly stomped on it, snapping the disc in half. Twin tendrils of light spiraled up and around him in opposite directions, streaking ever faster and drawing thinner with each circuit until, finally meeting directly over William's head, the tendrils collapsed into a point and vanished. William's head spun as he adjusted to a flood of new images. The light wasn't gone. It was still swirling invisibly around him, letting William see simultaneously in all directions. I wonder if that's the armor light spell. It doesn't say here. Although his uh, melee and defense have gone up, which is just lovely. Because it's it's gotta. It's really gotta. There we go. Hopefully that'll help. I don't know how long it will assist. We'll see. And I am trying to use Aaron's spells judiciously as well. Um, like, a, you know, a lightning bolt here and there is great. Uh, but in the encounter right before this one, I mean, I hit a guy with two lightning bolts in a row. And up until this point in the game, that has been sufficient to take out anyone. Uh, and this guy was still standing after he took 80 damage. So, and I mean, right, like, like William has got... Uh, um, well, I mean, even, even Aaron, 32 plus 48, right? That's 80 hit points. So, and he's the weakest member of the party. William's got more than that. So I really am missing Kalen being here. Um, it's, it sucks not having a third person. But, we will get through it. Um... <clears throat> Like I said, you know, the, the lightning bolts are great when I can throw them. And in fact, let's see. I'm going to throw one now because I just really don't want that guy to get away. He's going to take all of our cash with him because we've got limited inventory space, uh, which is another reason we need to use some of these power-ups and items, these consumables. Um... But we're still going to have to bite the bullet and do a little bit of inventory Tetris in order to carry some of this armor, some of these weapons and things to a merchant and sell them if we want to get back to where we were, uh, which that's going to be necessary. They're going to want to sell us things that we're going to want to buy. Starting with, we've got to get our new armor and his new sword blessed. And there's just an awful lot of missing going on with the bad guys have got bad RNG too, so... Oh my goodness, look at this. No one is doing well, because everybody's health is in the yellow. Wow. I really want a healing spell that's not Gift of Sin. Um... But you know what? We haven't gotten to... Uh, there we go. We haven't gotten to cast that yet. And William is out of Send Water, so... Should be Aaron's turn next. Let's give it a try. Here we go. Gift of Sin. So, this is the healing spell that we have. Um, but it is a health transfer spell. So, for every one stamina we spend, it gives two. Or one health, rather, that we spend. Um, it gives two to the, uh, uh, the target. Oh, I forgot about that, though. The, the cost of the spell is paid in health, not stamina. Oof. Big oof. So, this is going to be... See, that, that's rough, because that, when your health decreases, of course, for those of you who might just be joining us or who are watching, you know, this video in the middle of the series, 
uh, and have missed all of the others somehow. Um, first of all, those are all on YouTube. Second, um, as your health decreases, so do your skills. So I'm going to use Unseeing Eye instead because it's just... I... Why can I not use it on him? I guess because he's standing there. Okay, well, I can hit him with this. Better than nothing. Okay, if he's gonna run, that's that's acceptable. Um, hmm. Much as I hate to spend that much stamina, another lightning bolt. There we go. Phew, we. It's gonna be a lot of this because, of course, I'm sure that the, you know the whole road and all these maps have been repopulated with encounters like this one. Oh, whoa! Oh, what have we found? Check this out. We did find a little bit of money, but this breastplate so we found new armor Ooh, indeed the breastplate was a simple piece of engineering made of two pieces of metal fastened together with buckles and leather straps its deflecting surface made it popular among mounted soldiers who were likely to find themselves amidst a lethal rain of arrows hmm okay we beat on them pretty good so they're both at 86 percent health damage absorbed 60 percent hardness 30. Okay, so the Montari Chainmail has a higher hardness. Hmm. It may have a lower damage absorption, though, because its condition is at 89%, which is more than the Breastplate, and its damage absorption is 53 versus 60. Oh, man. Well, so in the previous episode uh we had spent all of that money on the montari chainmail and then you know also on a, a broadsword and the first encounter we got into they dropped a broadsword that had 100 percent durability so i'm not surprised now that we bought montari chainmail um to find free breastplates wow the problem here is the reduced hardness means that it will deteriorate a little faster than the Montari Chainmail. But the damage absorption, hmm, it has to be higher because if, this, if the condition is 3% less and the damage absorption is, what is that, 7% more? Yeah, 7% more. So it has to have a higher damage absorption. <sighs> This is really rough because the Montari chainmail that he's wearing cost us 1,400 burlas. So the fact that we bought a suit of this and a broadsword for both William and Kalen, who is not even in the party right now, is why we don't have any money left over. Um, on the one hand, if we had not done that, like, I'm not going to complain because if we had not purchased this equipment, we probably would have the snot beaten out of us and wouldn't be able to make it through some of these encounters, particularly considering that we have uh, a party member missing. So we've got reduced resources overall. That means that more enemies are gonna be targeting like each person and so on and so forth. Um, but on the other hand, it does sting a little bit to think that we spent that much on this equipment and then just immediately we get right into the next chapter and it's going to give us better stuff but that's how it is in video games in general uh, as soon as you buy a thing then you know the dungeon drop is always better what did i say during uh, the titan quest series if you followed that you know I, I don't buy anything from shops because the dungeon drops are always superior and they're free they they don't cost anything except uh taking a mace to the face and giving back in kind now this, check this out. It looks like a little send water icon. Special. Poisoned. A poisoned arrow. Hey, now. Interesting. Okay, well we'll give that to him to carry. Okay, so. Hmm. Yeah, I noticed that. They all, they had three rapiers. And not a bow between them. 
which is really interesting because what I'm seeing here is like all of them were swordsmen, but there are only two shields as well. So it's like the guys in plate were using shields and swords, and then they had like sort of a like a light melee guy perhaps, and the one who got away. I don't think he would have been an archer because he left, so those arrows aren't his loot, right? Uh, so, like, why drop poisoned arrows if you if you aren't an archer, if you're not carrying a bow? Who knows? Uh, we could speculate all day, but what I want to ask you instead is... Do you think that since we have been provided with two breastplates... That we should give those to the boys. His his damage absorption is slightly higher because it is blessed. That doesn't affect the hardness. But yeah, less damage is better. So put that on him. Swap their armor. Oh, he actually looks pretty good in that. Aaron looks kind of ridiculous in it, but he looks pretty good. Um, let me do this. Let's see what he repairs it to. Oh, up to 100%. Okay, so this is the this is what we can see then. Um, the damage absorption is 70% for a breastplate that is in full repair. That is... That is more, I think. Now let's... Because his was slightly damaged. Okay, at 98%, his is at 67. I think that it's 68 or 69% when it is at full durability. And that is with the blessing. So that means that, of course, um, if we bless a breastplate, it's going to have more than 70 damage absorption. <sighs> well... Big changes already. And um, I should explain the reason that I'm, I'm heading back down this way. is not just on a whim. Although, of course, I do want to explore and see what's different. Because we have found from going back to places that we have already been. That whenever we do return to a community or, or a town or whatever that uh, we have visited in previous chapters. Then new chapters often means that um, there are new experiences to be had. Of all the men they sing of, I'm the only one who's free. My cup contains no poison, no assassin waits for me. I'm not one to remember, but I'm also not to blame. And in all the tales that Joyman tell, you'll never hear my name. Fair enough. Yes, we would definitely like to rest. Goodness gracious, look at that. See, and this is one of the reasons why um, we are absolutely going to have to have access to some shops. We're going to have to sell some of this crap. Because look, oh my goodness gracious, how much work and money we're having to put into just resting. Uh, we've got food for a while, which is good. Whew. Let's check and see how their skills are doing. His melee went up. That's good. I really want his defense to go up, too. His stealth is not doing badly. Spellcasting is up. So that means some of these have increased. Good, good, good. Create is at 62. Water is at 56. Not bad. Not bad. We haven't unlocked any new spells, sadly, but we'll get there. Huh. But, uh, so, yeah, we want to check out some of these communities because we don't know what is going to be different. We don't know how things are going to change. Now, melee. Not sure that there's much here to... to re-explore, but there are some, you know, like Ravenna, for example, that I definitely want to go back to. And one of the reasons why is because um, one of you commented 
um, on one of the uh, YouTube uploads. Yeah, okay, we don't need anything from here. One of you left a comment uh, that uh, might be the solution to a puzzle. I want to go back and see. Um, I'm very interested to find out because... So, you might remember, and if not, you know, do go back, check out the uh, playlist on YouTube, and you can see the previous episode where we got to Water Fork, and um, we were given this emerald, and I have been hanging on to it because it is, I won't call it a bad habit of mine necessarily, although it does affect games like this with um, low inventory space, or restricted inventory space, uh, but I do have a habit of... Um, hanging on to items that I don't find in shops. So that is, you know, like, if I've not found a place to buy something yet, I kind of, I treat it as a unique item. Good. Oh, Aaron is leading the charge. And we're near a town with an inn, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna blast away. So, like, we have found places where we can buy rubies and emeralds. We found places where we can buy pearls. Um, what we have not found is any place where we can purchase emeralds. Oops. Rubies and sapphires, pearls, those kinds of things. They've not really come up except as, you know, as treasure that we can sell. This emerald, though, may have another use. Because, um, I was told... that uh, there was a legend about one of the emperors having a blue eye and a green eye, being heterochromatic, right? And apparently, the bust of the emperor in the museum at Ravenna has a sapphire in one eye slot, but is missing an emerald in the other. So we're going to go back to the museum of Ravenna and see whether or not um, we are able to perhaps use the emerald on that. Don't hit William, don't hit William, don't hit William, don't hit William. Yes, good. I think that's the first time we've killed someone with hot foot. Maybe. I'm not, I won't swear to that. Y'all can fact check me. We've hit people with hot foot a number of times, but I think that might be the first time we've actually taken someone down with it. Well, maybe not. I don't remember. We're quite a few installments into this series now, so I'm, I'm starting to forget the details. Oh, goodness gracious, yes. Ooh, more poisoned arrows. Okay. Meat pie... Some bread. Most of these rations will go bad before we can use them, but, like, where would we sell them anyway? And that's Essence of the Wind. So, of, of course, as someone else commented on YouTube, we've been discussing this. Uh, you know, like, when you have an armorer's hammer, it has it's one hammer with 14 uses versus it is not a stack of 14 hammers. Other things are, like, you know, this is four lengths of bowstring. Uh, this is a collection of four potions, I guess? Either that or it's one big bottle that you can drink out of four times. Like, it's got four doses in it, if you want to think of it that way. So, we've got room for at least one of them because they stack up to five. I don't think... Yeah, okay, it doesn't stack past that, so we'll leave that one for now. Just gonna leave these markers. Chapter four looks like it might be a big one because if we have access to all of this all the way back to Water Fork, um, and then also we have access to all of this as well. Because I'm guessing kind of the halfway point ish, like somewhere in this area, is where it's going to be divided into the other state then, like, this is a lot of territory. This is literally half of the game world minimum is open to us, assuming that we can get all the way back around. So, we'll find out about that. And um, I will, in between episodes, 
uh, go back and take care of running back and forth and picking up like one suit of armor at a time uh, you know and then running it to the uh, uh, running it to the nearest shop uh oh oh no we have an enemy mage don't like that so I'll tell you what we haven't gotten to try a breed as conduit let's do it Melee, stealth went up, spell accuracy went up, that's good. So his spell casting is 49, spell accuracy is 30. I'm just glancing over our stats here to see what this changes. Aaron unscrewed the brass cap and took a long pull from the canister. Immediately, the cobwebs in his mind dissolved and his thoughts focused on the magical forces around him. Okay, that gives you a huge boost to spellcasting. Yes, it does. Alright, well, in that case... Let's just take care of this guy right away. We'll use our surprise round from our ambush to get rid of him while the getting is good. Here's the last of our send water, but I think it's going to a good cause. Because these mages, I mean, you never know what spells they're going to know. There we go. I already feel better. So I don't want them hitting us with lightning bolts. William can't stand it. He can't take it. Alright, we'll distract this fella. And the other one will probably immediately come for Aaron. Oh, I just realized I forgot to repair after that last fight. Oh, no. That's not good. I was doing so well. That'll put us behind on his sword and breastplate, which is a shame, but... I'm gonna recover a little stamina manually. And then still slip an attack in there. Doing fairly well. I'm sort of wondering, like, I'm kind of half waiting to see from looting these fellas, um, how many of them have the upgraded equipment, right? Get him. Come on, William. Get him. Oh, he's gonna get away. Oh, he's not. Uh, oof. Oof. Oh, we're so close to a town. I'm... I'm gonna spend health. When he's unseeing eye to slow him down and hope that William can get him. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. All right. Okay. And now... This time I will not forget to repair. Oh good, and his repair skill went up too, to 59. Well done. Okay. Everything's coming up, William. Spellcasting's at 50. Not bad, not bad. I feel like I should take off area, and I'm going to put on electricity because I've been using lightning bolt, and it's not leveling up because this isn't ticked. So, and like, area is going to go up on its own anyway. You can see that they all are. Electricity will just go up faster if it is ticked. Okay. Well, that stayed at 90 anyway. Oh, that's still at 100. Okay. Well, then we just need to do this. And 79. Eh, could be better. Let's see what y'all are carrying. Nothing. Well, that's all right. That's all right. Because I don't remember what the shop in Ravenna... Um, see? I said we wouldn't get to use those rations. But I, I don't remember what the shop in Ravenna even sells.
Uh, oh, that's the museum. I thought it was the inn. Do they have an inn? No. No, they have a pub, don't they? Burjons. Burjons. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll just have to camp a little bit then. There we go. Is that Scott? What are you doing here? Scott, what are you doing here in Ravenna? I developed a Ravenna's appetite for Ravenna lamb cakes. And where better to eat them but in Ravenna? <sighs> Scott is the developers reaching forward through time to punish me for my own use of bad puns. It's, it's really just karma. We can ask him about the shepherds, though. This could be useful. What's your opinion of the shepherds? They're an odd lot. A mix of spoiled rich kids and misguided fools seeking a purpose. They want to start a war with the Grolf again. And anyone picking a fight with a Grolf is an idiot. Hmm. Okay. Well, now we know a little bit more about them because we really didn't know anything about the shepherds other than, um, you know, we had that medallion. May your roads be dry and cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, then, you know, like we, I think Lord Caverton basically called them terrorists. Um, and that was about it. I think this is the first that we've heard of, like, their mission statement, so to speak. Okay, what does Ravenna sell at their shop? Okay, she sells general goods. That's great because that usually means that we can sell just about anything in return. She won't buy jewelry. Oh, she will. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Well, we may have to do that. But what we are going to have to do is um, we're going to have to buy some Ascend Water. Oof. Don't like that price. Okay, uh, museum, museum, museum. Where's the museum? There we go. It's behind us. No, no, go in here. Oh, there's an invisible wall. We can't just slip through the uh, building sprites. Okay, sure. Excuse me, is the museum open? Yes, we're open. Come in, come in. I like this character. Okay, she has nothing new to say to us at the moment. Thank you for all the information. It was very <laughs> interesting. We're having a lecture series on the artistry of Trakan nest building star- Right. Okay, so yeah, here is the, the bust, and you can see it has one blue eye and not a green eye. Let's see if we can fix that. Hey! All right, y'all were right. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate whenever you leave a comment on my videos anyway. Uh, but especially when they lead to discoveries like this, because I absolutely would have missed this. I was not even expecting to come back, and um, like not during Chapter 4. And if I had come back later, I may have sold the emerald or done something else with it and have forgotten about this by that point. So, so this is great. The emerald slid into the empty eye socket with a soft click. A tiny compartment on the front of the bust popped open, revealing a shiny ring. Aaron picked up the ring and hastily closed the compartment. As he jarred the bust, the emerald slipped loose and fell from the socket. Aaron watched in dismay as it skittered across the floor and vanished into a drainage pipe. Uh, <laughs> so it went the way of the diamonds and uh, the dame was loaded, I guess. That's ridiculous. Why would why would it not just stay in the eye socket? Like they they went out of they went out of their way to like give you the finger for solving the puzzle. Like, hey, we want you to know this emerald. This emerald, folks, it's fucking gone. It's 
gone. You don't have it anymore. Like, I, I get it. It's, it really is fine. Oh my, well, what ring did we get though? Ah, the Circlet of Sinadrin. Circlets of Sinadrin were said to have been forged from the goddess's own tears at the death of Emperor Valorian I. Only a few were known to exist, but the tales of their astounding curative abilities created a broad market for worthless fakes. Oh. Huh. So what does this do, then? The Circlet of Sinadrin, I wonder... I hate to take off his shadow ring, honestly, but, um, I don't know that it's going to change anything here, so, yeah, this is a big find. Uh, okay, health 32, stamina 48. Let's see if maybe it changes his health. 32 and 48, no. Huh. Is it maybe, like, health or stamina regeneration in combat? Because that would be incredible. That would be amazing. Oh, I hate that it doesn't tell you what it does. It doesn't say anything. Um, okay, well, let's wear it for a little while and see what it does. He's got 24 of 48 health. Let's see if maybe as we walk around, perhaps his stamina will come back? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Excuse me, is the... Uh... As you no doubt recognize, this is a bust of... Right. Okay, I was hoping she might say something about it, but... Thank you for all the information. Yeah, we've got to experiment. Okay, well. So... Uh, this is, uh, this is what I wanted to do. Um, the important thing here that we have discovered, other than, uh, the item and stuff itself, other than solving that puzzle, which feels really great, and thank you all for your help, um, is that this proves we need to go back and explore some of the areas we've already been, so we've got to go back to go forward. So now, I want to talk to all of the people here uh, in Ravenna, because see, just like this, we might be able to get some, uh, some new encounters, some new information, stuff like that. The door was opened by a middle-aged man with gentle brown eyes. He smiled. A voice from inside called out, Well, who is it, Stuart? Stuart grinned, gesturing the party inside. In a clear voice, he said, Don't know, don't care. Enough to have, enough to share. A handsome, silver-bearded man rose from an armchair and approached the visitors. In resonant tones, he explained, My brother is a bit slow. You see how it is? <laughs> I'm the mage, Thomas Aquivar. How may I be of service to you? Oh, a mage, you say? Well, give us magic skills. That's how you can be of service. Also, special guest appearance. Bike. Secret cat. Aaron introduced himself and asked whether the mage would be willing to teach him some spells for a reasonable sum. Thomas shook his head. No, I'm sorry, my lad, but that I cannot do. You see, my talents are vast and profound. I'm afraid that if I showed you even the smallest part of my powers, it would be too much for you to handle. Well, uh, you know what else is going to be too much to handle? Uh, these hands when I throw them at your condescending ass. Who does this guy even think that he is? I mean, like, sure, he's a wizard, but also, like, like kiss my butt. Disappointed, Aaron turned to go. As he and William left the cottage, Stuart rhymed, If magic comes as magic goes, we'd all have fingers instead of toes. William laughed and waved. <laughs> Goodbye to you too, Stuart. Aaron paused outside in the yard. That was odd. I think there's more to this Thomas Aquivar than first meets the eye. There was a strange feeling in that room. 
Nothing I can quite put a name to. Hmm. Huh. Well, let's talk to him again and see if he says something different, perhaps. Oh. Why did a skill just go up? Aaron cautiously peered inside the mage's window. As his eyes adjusted to the dim light, he saw Thomas and Stuart standing side by side. Thomas read from a book while Stuart gestured with his hands. A paperweight on the other side of the room slid across the table upon which it sat. Ah, now I see. Aaron turned from the window, angrier than William had ever seen him before. Heading toward the front door, Aaron snapped at William. Come with me. Bewildered, William followed Aaron back into the mage's house. Disturbed by the sudden interruption, Thomas shouted, What do you mean by barging in here? Leave this instant! Aaron shouted back, I could tell something felt wrong in here, I just didn't know what it was. But now I know. You're no mage. All the magic is in your brother. You're using him. Thomas Aquivar sighed and sat down in the armchair, suddenly calm. You are right. But you are also wrong. We use each other. I am the voice that gives his power shape and substance. My knowledge and guidance ensure that Stuart uses his gift to benefit the town folk, not do them harm. The mage continued, I am indeed guilty of perpetrating the myth that I am a great mage. But I know how these people treated my brother as a child. The harsh words the throne stones. If they knew he had the gift, their contempt would be replaced by fear. I might not be able to protect him. Aaron looked at Stuart, who stroked a kitten and smiled back benignly. I see. I am sorry. We won't tell anyone. We, we promise. Thomas smiled. For that you have my thanks. Perhaps, now that you know our little secret, you would be interested in a little magical study after all. Aaron's nodded vigorously. Yes, I'd like that. Together, Thomas and Stuart showed Aaron how to speak the words and manipulate the forces. He learned quickly, and after only an hour, had much to show for his efforts. Man, I tell you what, Aaron is either the best and most talented wizard... Or, uh, these people that we keep meeting are just incredible educators. Like, the best teachers. Because he spends an hour or two with these people, and he comes away knowing an entire different school of magic or a whole new spell, and it's like... My guy. Like, I can't even focus long enough to learn how to solve a new math problem. Aaron was about to follow William out the door when Stuart set a hand on his shoulder. Looking into the mild brown eyes, Aaron heard, Deep and strong the currents flow, float like a leaf or be pulled below. Stuart turned his attention back to the playful kitten. Aaron looked at Thomas, who shook his head slowly. Many of the things he says, I don't understand either. Good luck, lad. Okay, so... Spellcasting went up by one point from what? Ah. His range increased by two. Oh! Oh, what? See? This is what I meant. Oh my gosh, look at this. I'm so glad we came back here. I'm so glad I clicked on this door. He's learned two whole new schools of magic. Cause and movement. What? What? Very nice. Motion, speed, and maneuverability, and of course, alter the state of a target or bestow a dependent condition. Okay. Interesting. Interest. Oh. And we have a new spell. Okay. Now, of course, if you've been here before, y'all repeat viewers know that, like, this is going to be a little bit loud just because this game is a little bit loud, so watch your volume, but... Shove. Huh. Okay. So that's related to the paperweight, then, I guess. Well. Well, well, well. That was, uh, well worth it. <laughs> hmm. 
awesome. Oh. I love those little, like, side encounters that uh, add a lot of flavor to the game. Well, and there we go, and suddenly it's nighttime. Okay, sure. Why not? We gotta use this food anyway. Before it spoils. Hmm. I don't think that we got this encounter before. A well-dressed man answered William's knock. He looked at William's travel-stained garments. No thanks, not interested. But we just like a moment of your time, sir. The man started to close the door. I said I'm not interested. Would it make a difference if I told you I'm William Escobar, the son of the governor of Pionda? The man looked dubious. And I suppose next you'll be telling me you've also found the wreck of the Cyrilin. William smiled his second most beguiling smile. <laughs> no, sir. I would never try to trick a man so obviously distinguished and intelligent. We just want to hear your opinions on the uh, recent developments. The man opened the door wide and inhaled deeply in oratorical preparation. Well, I can see why you'd be interested and why you'd come to me for information. I am, after all, a successful merchant. Quite possibly the most successful merchant in all of Ravenna. Yes, precisely. Uh, the new chapel marks a turning point for this sleepy little town, a real awakening. <laughs> Why, when Felic Mar himself agreed to officiate at the dedication ceremony, I said to myself, Eustace, this is just what Ravenna needs. A real blowout occasion, and you're just the man to pull it all together. Uh, when is the dedication to take place? Eustace blustered, uh, don't know exactly, but we've already been told to expect an entourage of at least 30 priests, minor official security forces. I don't know who all else. It's quite an honor, yes, sir. Quite an honor. William's brow wrinkled. If you don't mind my asking, have you thought about where you're going to put all these people? And how you're going to feed them? The drought must have caused a food shortage in this town, too. Oh, don't worry about that. We haven't given it much thought yet, but I'm sure that when the townsfolk understand how important it is to put on a good face and our best foot forward, they'll join together with hands outstretched. Holding tar and feathers, William muttered under his breath. Uh, thanks for condescending to speak with us, sir. I'll be sure to give your greetings to my father. The merchant visibly shivered with delight. Oh, you are too, too generous, Master Escobar. It's been a real pleasure meeting you. I only wish you'd been able to spend more time. Well, even these few minutes seemed like a, an eternity to me. Oh, that is so kind of you to say. Thinking twice, the man paused. Then, shrugging, he closed the door. <laughs> okay, well... Okay, this is the one with the children rhyming. And this is the religious hermit, right? I think. Let's see. Okay, that's the stained glass window maker. So I guess that... Um, the chapel's not open yet, so that's still an ongoing thing. Well... We've come this far. So... Next stop... Ormade, I guess. I want to see how far we can go and what else has changed, because that alone was definitely worth the trip back to Ravenna. I mean, the ring, too. Oh, which reminds me. 2448. Okay, so he's still not recovering. Like, he's not regenerating stamina as we walk. Time has passed, too, because we camped, so... Uh, let's see... Hmm. Oh. Shove. Hey, we learned it already. Wow. Well, it is. it does seem to be a low-level spell because it only required five or seven points in cause and movement. 
Oh my god, look at the little stick figure icon for this. That's really... Oh, what? Okay, this is hilarious. Not just because, like, look at his, his little fist pump. Like, he's really going. He's excited. But my favorite part of this is check out his little butt, you guys. He's, why does he have a little butt sticking out? Like, I guess because you're looking at him side on, like hieroglyphic style, but why, why's he got a little, he's got stick figure booty. Okay. Well, anyway, um, hmm. Okay, so shoves the target backward, presumably meaning away from the caster. Target, this is interesting. Adjacent enemy or ally. Huh. So you could use that to push, like, William or Kaylin out of an obstacle or away from, you know, like a, a, a damage over time effect on the field, perhaps, like out of a wall of fire or something. Huh, or just to, like, break a zone of control. Distance is one space. Okay, and for every increase in stamina, it's going to go up by one space to a maximum of ten spaces for 13 stamina. That's a pretty good shove, y'all. Wow-wee. Okay, well, that's cool to know, anyway. You'll love to see it. I'm interested to see where these uh, new magics will take us next, then. Uh-oh. Oh, thank goodness he missed. We do not stand an enemy archer. Okay, now I can see that you also have a sword, so you get a lightning bolt too. William, you go get that guy. Oh, he's probably gonna get away. Maybe, maybe? Oh, dang it. Okay, well. So, so far, it does look like the enemies are overall a little bit tougher, but it likewise seems as though um, they are not as strong or they don't have uh, the same level of equipment as their northern cousins the further south we go. So as we are backtracking, these folks are becoming less of a threat. Go get them, William. Don't let them all get away. They're all gonna get away, aren't they? No, you know what? Nah, fam. See, this is what I meant about judicious use of his magic, is because in this chapter, without Kaelin here, we're just gonna have to rely a lot more on his magic anyway. Um, but Unseeing Eye costs five stamina and prevents them from running away, allows William to catch up to them and hit them, you know. Whereas, um... Oof. If we hit them with a lightning bolt, it's going to cost a lot more. How much does he have? Seven. Ooh. What? What in the world? How did William get hit with that? Wow. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I... Oops, I, I guess. Oops. I, I don't know. I didn't think that I clicked on William. I didn't know that you could shoot your allies with harmful spells. Huh. Ah, at last an inn. If there are no other encounters blocking the road between us and Ormide here, or Ormede, whatever it is. We're golden. Oh yes, thank you. I do need to repair. Don't want to forget that. First, let's sleep for two days. Oh, goodness.
goodness gracious. Uh, yeah, I've got to, just to get through the night. There we go. Okay, anyone here to talk to? Uh, oh, that's right. This is where we heard that story about the Cyrilin that allowed us to help um, write the song. That's the token gambler. Oh, Hannah lives in innocence. We're all okay, that's one of the tavern songs. Okay, uh, armor. Well, weapon then. Oops. Did he get hit? No, he's fine. Okay. Cool. Uh, what do they sell at this shop? I forget. It is morning. It is morning. Let me in, game. It's morning. There we go. Flawless stones. Oh, good. Some place that we can actually sell this. Ah, oh, for a little bit more. 64 burlas. Good. Uh, we'll have to because we need it. Um. Hmm. That's that. Do we know what's in here? Let's find out. Empty! Ah! Oh. <laughs> uh, that was on the map, you see, because I keep notes. Well, let me save that shovel then. Okay. Let's see if anyone in this town has anything new for us. This one may be a quiet one. Oh, okay. A look through the open doorway revealed a teacher sitting on the floor in the center of a ring of children. William noticed that the teacher was uh, young and pretty. <laughs> he sidled into the a cottage. The teacher welcomed the guest to the classroom, inviting him to listen to the history lesson for the day. Hmm. Blushing a bit under William's appreciative gaze, the teacher continued. Now, children, you remember that yesterday I told you about the war against the Gruulf before the founding of the Antaran Empire. Humans won that war at the Battle of Ulrich, where the Gruulf finally surrendered. To ensure the peace, we established a garrison of soldiers in the Harkoon Mountains. Can anyone tell me what those soldiers were called? A half dozen hands flew into the air. The teacher pointed at one little girl. Yes, Dorona? They were called shepherds, ma'am, because they had to watch for the wolves. Very good, Dorona, but we call them Grolf, not wolves. Has anyone ever seen a Grolf? No hands raised. William lifted his hand tentatively. The teacher hesitated, then smiled. I see our new student would like to add something. Your name, sir. I'm William, ma'am, and I've seen a Grolf. In fact, I've seen several. The teacher played along. Well, William, can you tell us what your Grolf looked like? Was he fierce and ferocious? Did he growl and try to bite you? Oh, no, that's not what Grolf are like at all. They're peaceful and friendly. The teacher stopped smiling. It must have been a tame Grolf, children. The wild Grolf live like animals up in the mountains, much the same as they did in the old days, when the shepherds had to protect the empire against their return. William left the classroom in disgust. I can't believe the nonsense about the Grolf she was filling their heads with. Aaron shook his head ruefully. They start the indoctrination process early around these parts. Good thing Kaelin wasn't here. Good thing indeed. William smiled. Actually, I think it'd be fun to put Kaelin and that teacher in a room together for a little while. Indeed. Oh, I was kind of buying into it there for a second, especially because, like, the teacher wasn't gendered until he finally said ma'am. So I was like, aha! Uh, but then in the same instant that she became, you know, a woman, she also became racist. I was like, uh, huh, what a letdown. 
Not that she was a woman, to be clear. That's obviously fine. Oh, oh hey. Speaking of fine women, the party was greeted by a disheveled woman with hair that looked like sparrows had been using it for housing. My name is Arlena. I'm a researcher for the museum in Ravenna. Would you like to come in? The companions followed the woman into her cottage, stopping dead in their tracks in amazement. The room was crammed from floor to roof beams with curiosities, objects of art, and stuffed animals, birds, and reptiles. Display cases of pinned insects vied for wall space with tapestries and masks. The air was heavy with the scent of dust and musk and aging leather. Things are a bit chaotic around here. My cottage serves as a warehouse for the museum's acquisitions. Everything needs to be identified, researched, and catalogued to ensure the correct installation in the museum. Arlena shoved her hand through her hair, dislodging a spool of thread and a quill pen. Oh dear. Aaron found his voice. It looks like you've got one of everything in the world here. Arlena laughed. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> not by half. In fact, there's a very particular item I'm searching for right now. I'm supposed to finish up an exhibit on mechanical locks, but I'm missing a lever chest. The display won't be complete without one. Aaron recalled a lever chest they'd found nearby. He told Arlen its location, and as she thanked him, Aaron saw the title of a volume atop a pile of books. Uh, oh, okay, That's there's just a, there's a typo there. Um, and as she thanked Aaron, the title of a volume atop a pile of books caught his eye locking mechanisms. Hmm. The researcher noticed Aaron's interest. Fascinating reading. I'm afraid I can't let you borrow it. It's part of the museum's collection, but you're welcome to stay and read it. Aaron took her up on the offer, and the companions huddled around the book. When the last page was turned a few hours later, everyone had gained a greater understanding of the inner workings of lock mechanisms. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. We gained six points in lockpicking, apparently. Hmm. It's the first increase that Aaron's gotten. Well, that's awesome, because with the Ring of Welcoming, uh, that puts us at, what would that be, 73 if we have it on? That's pretty respectable. Okay, excellent. Well, this is, uh, this is proving to be a very fruitful stint of backtracking. I'm glad that we came this way. Hopefully there will be, like, minimal encounters. I'm torn between not wanting to fool with it, right, and just kind of hoping that, like, there isn't much on the road, uh, and um, hoping that there is, because at least we know what some of the shops around here sell, and that, like, we can sell armor and so forth. Uh-oh. Big oof. An ambush dislike. Okay. We just need to take some of these guys down. So I'm going to have to go whole hog in order to just clear some of the field. There we go. That's a bit better. Oof. I think they might both need a little sand water. Okay, let's give him a few. Oh, it cured poison, too. Oh, I forgot. Because it says, like, it purges the body of toxins and stuff. I forgot Sinadrin's water or... Oh, no, wait. Never mind. I was about to say, like, I forgot that it's a cure-all, but I guess it's not. Oh, my God. Could you hit something, William? Could you? Maybe. Okay, um... Lightning Bolt on you. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. There we go, that's not nothing. Oof. Okay, come on, William. You can get him. Take him down. Yes! All right. Oh, wow. He actually went after... Huh. 
I'm surprised that he changed targets. Okay, well, while they duel, he can rest. Uh, I know if I hit him with a lightning bolt or something that he's just going to run away anyway, so... Oh, hey, we got him. That was lucky. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I know William is poisoned. Um, thankfully, we have an antidote for that. There we go. Okay. Uh, why is he still poisoned? What, why, why is he still poisoned? Uh, okay. Well, this is a lot of rations, which is great, because we do need that, so at least that's good. And we've got a lot of arrows. We should shoot some of them. Um, hmm. guess you're just gonna have to stay poisoned, my, my dude, my fella. Yeah, the party is getting tired, I'm sure, but there's a town right there with an inn. Oh, no. 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 I was so foolish. I believed for just a moment that we might make it. Why is he still poisoned, though? Leave Aaron alone. No, I don't want to abort his turn. Okay. I didn't get to repair because I wasn't expecting a uh, an encounter. Hmm. I'll just chase that guy around and hit him while William deals with these two yahoos. Assuming he can, if he can hit anything. Come on. Wizard duel with sticks. Uh, hmm. Go ahead and do this. Come on, William. Come on. Hang in there. I know you've got it in you. Why is this guy not attacking? Not that I'm complaining. Like, if he wants to stand there and, you know, be beaten to death by a stick, then that's totally okay. It's just an odd choice. Okay, more send water. Hey, he's not poisoned anymore. Maybe he had multiple stacks of poison? Is that a thing? Oh, the wizard got away. Okay, well... Oof. William's gonna chase this guy, and we're gonna help him, now that we have the stamina to do so. Slow him down there. Boom. A spell is worth a thousand swords. <laughs> Even if we only get two of them, that's fine, because this was an unexpected ambush. As most ambushes, I guess, are. To be fair. OK. 
Okay. We'll keep resting for him to gain some stamina, and that will mean that it'll take a little bit less resting time, hopefully. But also it means that uh, we can do this. Keep that debuff on him. Goodness gracious. I think Aaron's gonna have to finish this because William can't hit anything. Oof, yeah. Big oof. Okay, hang in there. William. Okay, lightning bolts. That might make him at least change his mind about what he's doing. There we go. Okay, some money, some rations. Oh, hey, what's that now? Check this out. We've not seen this icon. Enhancements iced. Interesting. So... It's ice. Does that mean, is this our first magic weapon? Like, is this like a, a frost brand rapier? Huh. I'm going to take that with us just because I definitely don't want to leave it behind and, you know, have it be something cool. Um, hmm. Okay, we're going to have to find out more about that. Also, uh, we're going to have to figure out what the Circlet of Sanhedrin does, because as far as I can tell right now, it's not doing anything. So I may have to look it up, or if one of you knows, then, you know, tell me, explain it to me, um, either here on Twitch, uh, or, you know, feel free when I upload this to YouTube to... Um, uh, leave a comment on the video. Oh, they don't have an in here, do they? Oh, no. Oh, gross. We're gonna have to rest. Or, um, you know, you can DM me on Twitter, hit me up on Facebook or Pillow Fort. and if you're not following or subscribed in all those places, then, you know, go right ahead and just do that at your leisure. Um, what town are we even in? Lavosha. Uh, well, since we're here, I want to at least explore it. Man, I wish I had repaired between those, those fights. The locked barn door wouldn't budge. Hey, last time we were here, we couldn't even click on this barn door. I don't think these, like, wheat shocks were out here either. I wonder, since it says that it's locked. What am I thinking? Uh, okay, well. Uh... Let's talk and see if anybody has anything interesting to contribute. Don't want to leave it behind if they do. No. Okay. No. Oh yeah, the jail cell. We never did find out what that's for. Oh, hey. Hmm. A handsome brass plaque read Magistrate Richter. Justice of Lavosha. A butler showed the party into the library. Magistrate Richter asked their names, then inquired after the health of William's father, whom he had met on several occasions. The conversation turned to their travels. Wishing to be gracious, William said, In all the towns we visited, I don't think we've ever met a more charming, generous couple than the Ampersands. Wait a minute. Are those the goofy pair that had just come back from traveling and wanted to talk to us, like, on the garden steps about it? The ampersands? They invited us, complete strangers, in for supper and conversation. 
I can't recall a more pleasant evening. Okay, maybe that wasn't them. Maybe that was, there was like a, no, there was a, a an elderly couple in one of these towns when we first got to Tikor. Who, yeah, they just took us in and like gave us stew and stuff. I remember that. The magistrate swirled his brandy, studying the liquid as if to see the future in the depths. The ampersands, yes. Let me tell you about the ampersands. They only recently arrived in Lavosha. We haven't been able to find out much about them, only that they're ostensibly from Istin. I say ostensibly because none of my friends there have ever heard of them. William leaned forward in his chair. What are you saying? Do you actually suspect those lovely people of being Mayrot spies? I say nothing until I have positive proof. I am only telling you what little I know, so that in future you will be more circumspect around strangers, young Escobar. Oh. Hmm. What is this now? What? The butler led the party back to the library. He stopped dead in the doorway, blocking the view. William pushed past him to witness the ampersands wrestling around on the ground with the magistrate of Lavosha. Uh. So they're they're just randomly fighting. Okay, wait. Is this the old couple? So this is just like. Is he just fighting like these two old people, or or are they the ones that we talked to in the garden step? I don't know. Um. Oh man. Okay. Uh. Well, who should we help? Whether whether the ampersands were the young traveling couple, or I th I think that they were like the the older folks that took us in and like gave us stew and stuff, and we basically rested overnight and didn't spend any food. So, yeah, I have no idea, like, what's going on here. And the magistrate, I don't know, I guess he's just, was just doing his job, but, like, why are they rolling around punching each other? Um, so who, whose side should we take here? Should we side with the ampersands, or should we side with the magistrate? I don't know, um... Okay, well, that's it then. That's good enough for me because, yeah, I'm, I think that the ampersands were the old couple. They're the only ones I can remember, like, taking us in and giving us food because the other ones I was thinking of um, were not the newlyweds way up north who offered to give us food and then we stepped out, you know, because we didn't want to irritate the wife in the kitchen. Um, but, like, the couple who had just come back from traveling, and that would be a little more sus, but they didn't invite us in and feed us, so... Okay, we're, we'll fight the magistrate. Oh. Ooh, something just happened. With the party's aid, the ampersand soon had the magistrate down on his knees, hands tied behind his back. He glared at William. What in Henna's name do you think you're doing? Your father shall hear of this. I'll have you all hung for treason. Irene caught her breath. You're the one who will most likely wind up at the end of a rope, Igdorf. We've been on your trail for quite some time. I'm assuming, I'm giving her like an old lady voice because I'm assuming that this is the old couple. Aaron looked confused. Will someone please tell us what's going on here? Meal Ampersand picked up a parchment from the floor. This is a warrant for the arrest of Igdorf Langley, a Mayrot spy. The Antaran government has been after him for years. Then, you and Irene are government agents? Aaron asked in disbelief. Yeah, because now, like, okay, I'm... I don't know if this is actually canon or not or if I'm getting it mixed up, but I'm absolutely going all in on this is the old couple because the idea of, like, this little old wizened, like, man and woman uh, who are also, like, imperial secret agents who are just punching this dude and like doing epic spy shit is is too good um 
Miel ran his hand over his head, smoothing down the few remaining hairs. Yes, okay, this is the old couple. Not after this case. I think we've done enough undercover work to provide our grandchildren with a lifetime of bedtime stories. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, my dear? Oh, this so it is. It's canon. This is the old couple. This is awesome. <laughs> okay. Irene took her husband's hand. Yes, love. It's time to retire. Oh, and I almost forgot. There's a reward for Igdorf's arrest. Please take it as token of the Emperor's thanks. And now I really think we should be going. We need to see to it that this rascal gets safely through the tribunal. We wouldn't want him to be late for his own hanging, now would we? The elderly couple smiled sweetly at each other over the head of their captive. Thank you. Thank you, Sierra Entertainment, for this gift. And also, what happened here? Oh, our assessment went up by, like, one point. But still, I guess we, we chose the correct thing. We, we called the magistrate out on being a spy or whatever, so our assessment went up. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. I love it. I love, love, love it. That's great. That is great. And he won't buy that. Okay, probably because it's partly used. Okay, well, we can come back and get more later. Will you buy this? 154 burlas for this enchanted ice rapier. I'm not going to sell that yet until we know for sure what's going on. Um... But at least we we know, like, if we do sell it, we can come back and get it. Um, let's see. Anything else here? Oh, technically the vineyard, I guess. Uh, don't need a celebratory drink. I don't think we went to this house. Oh, William knocked on the farmhouse door. Uh, oh, the reward. I'm actually not sure. Uh, I'm going to guess it was money. Uh, we'll look after we get out of this conversation because I did not check our inventory. Um, the farmer came out of the barn. Travelers, are you? Looking for a bed for the night? We may be, but this doesn't look like an inn to me. The farmer gestured toward the barn. You can stay in there for 20 barrels a night. Plenty of clean straw and fresh well water. Only thing I ask is you don't spook my cows. Also, that you take your belongings with you when you leave. Why would we want to leave our packs behind? William asked. My calling is animals. I don't claim to know people or their ways. All I know is the last fellow who stayed left his things. Don't want folks making a habit out of that behavior. Well, you have nothing to fear, my man. I promise you that when we go, if we decide to stay at all, that is, we will take not only our stuff, but possibly his as well. And it'd shoot me fine if you did. Now, do you want to stay or don't you? Okay, well, if we're going to get free stuff. <laughs> Clean straw and fresh water. Sounds like an offer we can't refuse. Thanks for your hospitality, friend. Guess okay. Now the the barn is probably unlocked. Uh, hmm. To make absolutely certain that we have room, I'm going to drop these arrows in a sack because we can get arrows, of course. But also we can just pick these back up. No big deal. Um handkerchief oh this diamond this this is our reward because we didn't have this before hardest substance known to man the diamond sparkle with prismatic radiance i think we've already had one of these but william thought you couldn't cook on it and just occurs to me like yes you can so yeah they gave us a diamond not cash um does he have enough to hold this the spooky chicken stick no, he does not. There's no... I don't... Why did I even try? Uh, 
Okay, well, just in case. We've not used the spooky chicken stick. I've been hanging on to it because it's the only, like, magic staff that we've found, but we haven't really done anything with it. And partly that's because it's a shitty weapon, and partly it's because we haven't figured out how to actually use its power. And even if we did, it's only got five charges, and I don't know if they recover on their own or if we'd have to find someone to charge it up for us, or if maybe there's a spell we haven't learned that will recharge magic stabs and wands. I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out. But for now, I'm going to leave the spooky chicken stick on the ground. We will pick it up in a minute, but I want to make sure that if there is, if we're going to take this guy's stuff... If there's like an inventory exchange that we have room. Hey. What? What is this? We're seeing a lot of these little icons suddenly. Is this another magic staff? Fire staff. <gasps> a red crystal nestled amidst the carved cherry wood flames of the staff which radiated just enough heat to provide comfort on a chilly night. That is very red. Oh my gosh, and it is very magical. And it is also a much better weapon than the spooky chicken stick. It's quarterstaff 10, 15, 15, 15, 10, 15. 10, 15, 10, 15, 10, 15. Okay, so this is about the same. The only thing that we have here, the only difference is that the swing accuracy is slightly less. Because this is 15. But other than that, they're the same. And we've been using swing because it is 5 points more accurate, but that seems like a great trade to me. Fire staff, check it out. Alright! I call that a win! Our boy finally has a proper wizard stick, folks! All right, and what's this? Okay, we got more of that, which now that we know what it does, that's super valuable because it's like plus 20 spellcasting. And what's this? A note. The note looked like it had been hastily scrawled on a blank page, which had been ripped from the back of a book. Okay... Uh, well, uh, what is the note, though? What, what does note do? I, I do not know. Um, okay, well, so, did that, okay, that did place a marker. This is a sack. Okay, um, actually, wait a minute, here's what I'm gonna do. Let's see if this shop over here will buy... Where is the shop? Where's the shop? Do they not have a shop? Oh, there it is. Psh. Starfish, you fool. Find the... You can't even find the door. There we go. Okay, yes. He will buy the quarter staff. Excellent. Excellent. You know what that means. Uh, spooky Chicken Stick rejoins the party. There we go, and take these arrows back with us as well. And good, automatically removes the marker. Okay. Yes, we have a flaming wizard stick. Excellent. And the next town up is Cardone. It's been a while since we've been there. And it is a short jaunt, so I'm going to head up that way. I feel so great. We got an actual wizard staff, maybe one that we can actually use. Because the thing about this is, it is still a swinging weapon. 
even if we can't figure out how to use it. Now, somebody said if you have a magic staff that does a thing and you use the thrust type attack, it casts the spell. But that did not work with the spooky chicken stick. So we will have to find out whether or not it's going to work with this one. Uh, okay. Hack. Thrust. Ah, look at this, though. The game seems to agree with us. So swing says damage 28, 97%. Hack damage 31, accuracy 75%. Thrust damage 44, accuracy 114 defense. Okay, and it doesn't look like a ranged attack, so maybe it just deals fire damage when you hit somebody with it, because that seems to be what this means, right? Like it says, blessed, no. Um, but this one, see, enhancements iced, and it's got this, and then, of course, the poisoned arrows have the poison icon, like the little Sinadrin thing. So... Maybe that's what it is, is it just deals fire damage, so it counts as a flaming weapon? Hmm. I wish it changed his sprite. That would be cool. I get why it doesn't, though. I'm not going to blame a game from 1997 for not doing the things that I expect on the fundamental level from, you know, a game in 2020. Alright, our first hit with the flaming wizard stick is a successful one. Nice. Oof, no. Don't hit William. All right, this is going pretty well. Oh, and that guy sees that it's going pretty well. Okay, well... Boom. Oh, and he got away anyway. Okay, well... That's fine. Oh, look at this. Okay. We found some of this in um, Takoro and I think didn't take it with us. This is poison. Earth End. And this is a poisoned short sword. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me put down a sack marker. I'm so glad that markers like the dig spots in the chests um, do consistently, like they, they're persistent across chapters. That is very helpful. Okay. Oh, awesome. His repair is going up. <laughs> Damage absorbed, 69%. Nice. Whetstone. Did Aaron take a hit? I can't remember. No, okay. That's almost a shame because I want to repair his armor. Okay, let's see what their skills look like. His melee is up to 38, which is not bad at all. Oh my goodness gracious. All over the place, things are increasing. Movement went up. Lord, Lord. Melee and his repair. Nice. We're getting there. We're getting there. Speaking of getting there, there's Cardone. The last time we were here, this is when we found our first shadow ring on the body of that um, wizard who apparently was a spy or something, maybe? So I'm just, I'm loving these ambushes. You love to see it, you really do. Uh, okay, rest. Man, I wish we had a fireball spell, but I wish even more that William would get a turn. There we go. Okay. William is going to be dealing most of our damage in a fight like this. 
Uh, he can't cast spells right now, otherwise I would put Unseeing Eye on some of these folks because I feel like that's the best thing, is if we debuff them so William can hit them. Okay, let me use a couple... Oh, he's out of Sin Water. Oh, no! Okay, well, I'm gonna use an Essence of the Wind because he absolutely needs the speed. Big oof. Big oof. No, I don't want to abort the spell. Okay, here. Oh, there you go. I guess you just can't cast on an adjacent target. I'm just gonna... I'm not even gonna pretend. That guy can just run. Ooh, this is not good. This is not good at all. Uh, hmm. I think uh, I'm going to have to try it. Um, okay, we'll take one of those. Gift of Sin. Oof. Uh, our first healing spell. Wow. That didn't give him anything back. What the? That didn't do anything. I mean, like, I know he just got hit, but he didn't get hit for, like, that much damage. So it, it took the, the life from him or the health from him, but didn't give anything to William. Wow. Okay, well, we're just gonna have to, uh... Just gonna have to load this one. Is this a scripted encounter? Can we see them? Because it would be great if that was the case. No, okay, it is an ambush. Let them get into position here, and then that's why they were getting two turns in a row. Hmm. This is a bit rough. Dislike. Okay, come over here and whack this guy. Send water. And you know what? Uh, let's take a steadfast potion as well. And one of these. And hope that they all stack. Okay. Oh, and he still got hit for 16 damage. Well, what good is all that defensive magic, then? Come on. Okay, one guy down. Alright. Let's try this, then. Thrust. Oh! Oh! Alright! So it is a magical melee attack. Bam! Oh, the problem, though, is it has four charge. I wonder if that's per fight. Okay, it didn't do anything that time, so let's see if that used a charge. Because if you don't hit, that that would be ideal. Like, okay, yes, if you miss, then it doesn't use a charge. Nice. Nice. I think we might get out of this, thanks to our flaming wizard stick. So we've already kind of popped the seal on this. I'm just going to go ahead and... There we go. I'm just going to use it to the max and hope that it helps us. And you, sir... Where are my poisoned arrows, though? 
Thanks, William. He's gone anyway. Phew, wait. Got 15 of these are poison, but it wouldn't let me, like, choose them in combat. They were all wrapped up together, which is odd. <gasps> hey, look at that. Welcome back to the stream, Wide Potion. Happy to be here, happy to have you back. Always our favorite guest. It's Wide Potion. Okay, now let me check here. Charges one. Oof. Big oof. Um, we've got to figure out how that works. That is going to be very important. Um... You know what, I'm going to go back here, since we had that earth end. We've not used it before. Let's see if we can combine that with some other arrows. There we go, generic video game snake hissing noise. And now... Mm. Ah, and now the game crashes. I see. Fascinating. Uh, well, okay. Um, hmm. I, I guess we would. Okay, I'm going to have to fight that battle over again then, apparently. Uh, but at least we got our charges back. Before we do, if that's the case, I want to see if I can replicate that and if that's just, if that was a one-time bug or if that's going to happen every time because I don't know how important that will be to know, but it could be important. Okay, so poisoned, poisoned. I don't think it matters, like, I'm assuming they're poisoned with the same stuff. That yeah, okay, fascinating. So apparently if you try to combine stacks of poisoned arrows, um, the thing that you kill is your game. So... <laughs> Alright, well, um, eh, it's about that time anyway. I'm gonna leave it there and um, <laughs> we'll, we'll pick up where we left off with uh, our new... Um, our, our new stuff and our new adventures in Betrayal and Antara again next Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is New York and Miami time here in the U.S. And um, don't forget, follow and subscribe here on Twitch if you're not already. And uh, be sure to jump over to the YouTube channel where you can find the entire playlist of this and all of the games that we have played. And uh, <laughs> you can... Like and subscribe there, and also on, uh, you know, Twitter, Facebook, and Pillow Fort as well. DM me, leave me comments, I'd love to hear from y'all. And I'll catch you next time. Until then, as always, thanks for playing.